Hey guys, welcome back to Envision Prototypes. I'm Nick. Shh. Today we're going to dust off the cobwebs and get to work on this old motorcycle fender that we started a little while ago. Now this piece here experienced a series of unfortunate events. And you might have a fender or a door that had a similar unhappy accident. And what we're gonna do today is fix this. Now it might not look too bad from where you're sitting on the couch there, but things are pretty, pretty messed up. You can see that goes down about two inches and it should have had a nice convex shape upward. The beads that we have here, we had a nice streamlined look to them. Well, right now, there's a lot of buckling going on there. This whole area has kind of been pushed down. And when you look at a panel, you have to say, what caused these areas to deform? Well, in this case, it was this collision damage here. So that's what we need to fix first. First in, first out and then we can look after these areas here if they don't correct themselves when we repair that. You'll see what I mean by that last statement. So when we look at this panel, bring it up to the camera, the impact was there, 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 and there, which caused this area in here, the material, to stretch. This center point didn't really stretch. It got impacted by the hammer, but the material around the perimeter is what stretched. Same here. That stretched, that stretched there, and of course that stretched there. And it stretched in such a way that most of the stretch occurred out here and less towards the center where the hammer struck. So what we're going to do is block the back of this with the dent upward, block the back of it with a dolly and with a very sharp strike, drive that bump down, right directly in the middle where the hammer originally struck this panel. And essentially what we're gonna do is tuck shrink that dent. Now if you don't know what tuck shrinking is, check out this video up here. I create a bunch of tucks on a fender to shrink the perimeter. Since this perimeter area is trapped by the surrounding metal to a degree, it's all in degrees, we're gonna take and drive that bump downward which will hopefully force the material that's stretched around the perimeter to go into itself, to shrink. To shrink. Let's try it. Now your panel or fender might have size to it. This is a little piece, so it might be a bit challenging to hold it, but I'll do my best. So we're gonna take a nice chunky dolly, place it on the back side, and then take our hammer and drive that. But the thing is, see, my hand is moving, so it's not gonna deliver an appropriate force. Uh, let's get in the chunk of iron and see if this was on a car, it'd be a lot easier because I wouldn't be moving around so much. And it's only in this case here that I'm gonna be doing this. Normally you'd have a dolly up inside your fender and you'd be striking the dolly, but because things are moving around, I need to make sure that the panel doesn't run away. Now, the issue with this is it's rocking on this flat area because we've concave this area so much. So, let's see if we back that up with a dolly like that. That'll work. And strike, let's get a heavier hammer. Strike directly in the center of that bump. There we go. Now you can see, hopefully, where I struck it with a hammer, that drove that center point up, but we have this extra material, the material I was talking about that stretched around the perimeter of that little impact area. So that's what has to shrink. But by doing this single strike, we've already improved the panel's 
convex, original convex shape. So let's strike this three more times, correct those, and see where we go. Line things up again. And strike that down. You see, we still have a very messed up curve. So, although we've driven that up, we still have a little bit of material around the perimeter that's puckered. I may have stretched more material than I initially intended to for this demonstration. So, let's see if we can oil can this panel. Take off the Mickey Mouse ears. Let's oil can this panel out the other way. Ooh. See how much strength those dents created? If I can reverse that dent like that, what I've done is I've popped this panel, as you saw, back out. But things are not sitting the way they did originally. And our convex shape is pretty great. We have, well, actually not too bad. What we're gonna do now is try to address those little puckers around the impact zone from this hammer here. Kind of smooth it out. So I'm gonna use the same hammer again and just work those little wrinkles around that impact zone down. We got some funny stuff happening here, but with this paintless dent repair, um, we're gonna have to take and work this metal a little bit more. But you can see, we do have a convex shape upward. And this oil can, it's getting a little less extreme. So let's keep going. Um, we can put this into the English wheel, but a lot of guys don't have English wheels to smooth this out and make things a lot faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use just a shoemaker hammer, as we call this hammer around here, just a wide face hammer, and kind of smooth those areas out, working against the dolly. Uh, we're done with that. We needed that mask for the initial strikes. Now it's all about finesse. I'm gonna work this in such a way you can see. White face, I said. So this dolly has a flat face as well as a rounded face. And I'm gonna place the rounded face into the convex shape of this panel, kind of line things up, and tap it out. If I had the flat face up inside, I'd probably be making marks around the perimeter. The whole idea is not to create any more issues. Pinch it a little bit. I'm placing the dolly again with the convex rounded shape upward into this convex area of the panel and I'm just working the areas that I see that are high. Just tapping them down. I'm not wailing on it, I'm just tapping them down. And because it's such a small area, the dolly is resting actually on the low areas. So we're taking the low areas and bringing them up and the high areas and bringing them down. There, I just worked on the middle one. This one here. You can see it's almost gone. We have a little crease happening there and this one's still quite significant and so are these. So we're gonna work these out, but if you notice that wrinkle that we had here, it's almost gone. It's almost gone. And this curvature is returning. We have a bit of a uh, kind of a dish in this area. So that will come up when we address that. 
I'm going to be using a series of on and off dolly techniques to work this area so that we, like I said, bring up the lows and bring down the highs, the high areas of the sheet metal. After we finish this panel, if you want to fully understand on and off dolly techniques, click that little card up above. It'll take you to a video we created about a year ago, maybe more, on on and off dolly techniques using transparent sheet metal. That's right, transparent sheet metal. And that'll really give you an understanding as to what's going on here when I'm working these dents out. You don't want to stretch the metal any more than it's stretched. All you want to do is take and minimize those highs and lows. We have a bit of a crease here. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. And we have probably from this iron, we have a little dent right there. So I can take and flip this over, drive that dent out by placing the dolly underneath, but sometimes you can't do that. So what I'm going to do is place the dolly, this area here, the most rounded point, underneath that dent and tap down the perimeter bringing that dent upward. You hear the difference? If I hit the center, listen. You hear that sharp sound? That's, I'm hitting the dolly directly. That's called on dolly. That dull sound around the perimeter, that there, I'm tapping around the dolly. And I'm bringing that dent upward. Most of it's gone. That was on dolly. Because I'm trying to get rid of the little crease created by the edge of that. Okay, that takes care of most of that one. Let's take out this crease here. Okay, so there we have most of those dents removed, but we st we're still left with a bit of an oil can here. So what I'm going to do is take and smooth out these dents a little bit more because there's still a little bit of something happening where the initial impact took place. Now, I'm not sure why I didn't think of this sooner, but we could use this vise to hold this panel while we plenish it out. So again, I put the dolly in, the convex shape of the panel is this way, put the curvature of the dolly against the panel, and just very gently Now, I don't want to take and peen the metal or hit the dolly too hard to create more surface area by squishing the metal. I want to just smooth things out. So I'm going to glance the hammer off the dolly, off the panel, and just smooth. See how much easier it is when the panel actually stays still? And I'm just working those little areas that were wrinkled around the perimeter of where we took and struck that initial strike initially. Struck that initial strike, yeah. So I'm going to work this for a few minutes, just kind of smooth it, and then we can uh, see how much curvature, outward curvature there is. And actually it's not too bad. So we don't have to shrink it down. You notice I'm not working anything out here. It doesn't need to be touched. Just where the damage was created.
very lightly holding the hammer and don't have a death grip on it. Just nice controlled loose grip. Letting the head do the work, not the arm. There we go. If you have access to a slapper or a spoon, which is one of these, it'll make things a little bit easier because it's distributing the force over a wider area and normalizing the highs and lows. You can also move up to a larger dolly, but we're gonna stick with this one here. You don't need a lot of tools to get the job done. And I'm not working anything here. I've mentioned that before, I think. I'm not touching anything around the perimeter, just the areas that were damaged. And this little wrinkle up here has mostly disappeared. We can take it out the rest of the way. That's about it. Now, as I'm working this, I can see where I've hit and I can see the different levels. But what you can use is a sanding block. And that'll really show up your highs and lows. See that? Doing this video in 4K to hopefully help you guys see a little more. There we are. So there's a low spot there. Everywhere where it's not brighter, it's the darker area. Those are all low spots. So that all has to be worked upward. So for instance, this one here, I'm gonna place the dolly in behind this area, tap here and tap here. You can see a bit of a higher, um, brighter area showing up right there. Just watching my battery light, it's getting a little bit down there. It's looking really good. Bit of a high spot there, and a couple of things happening there. So again, I could use a slapper, but if you don't have one, just stick with the widest face hammer you have. You can make a slapper if you have a lot of stuff to do. That there is getting very, very close. Just some 80 grit on a relatively hard pad. You don't want a sponge pad. And there we go. We are so close with this panel. A couple of things happening there. Okay guys, so that is going to pretty much wrap up this panel. I don't see any more, anything really. Have a nice smooth surface, little bump right there. Just gonna back that up, the low spot. And 
just around the perimeter, a little light tapping until the bump disappears. There we are. We have a nice consistent grain with the sandpaper, just 80 grit. And as you can see, we touched nothing around the perimeter. We didn't get into any of the beads to restore the beads. Everything is as it should be. You can use your bare hands if you want to, but when it's this humid, this thing's gonna rust quick. That's why I prefer gloves. And you can see on the gloves, they're actually getting pretty dirty. But with the glove, you can also, because these are so thin, you can also feel just what anything happening in the metal. Okay, I think that's all she wrote. There we go. Don't be surprised if a repair like this could take several hours. It can take days. It just depends how bad the damage is and how far you want to take the panel in terms of the final repair quality. Uh, if you settle for a bit of Bondo, well, you don't have to take it to this stage. Nothing wrong with filler, but uh, you know, try to get as close as possible. But as you can see, all the reflections are tracking well. and uh, we're good to go. So if you learned something and you like what you saw, hit that like button. And if you're new to our channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please do, it helps our channel grow. If you have any comments or questions, throw them down below. Until next time guys, take care.